Well, hi everyone. Welcome back to the channel. And it's been a while, a long time. And I'm saying that a little bit more often. Um, just at the moment with how life is, uh, that's just how it is, ups and downs. And I'll preface this one by saying, my fitness is dire. And I've said that on the last few videos as well. I've got a ridiculous pack. I've got a few beers. I've got some nice food. And I've got a strong four season tent because the weather forecast tomorrow um, is predicted gusts over 50 mile an hour. Um, the tent can stand it. It's a, it's a Hilleberg Namach. It's a four season tent. It's a black label series. And it's one that I bought used off eBay. I said I would explain the story of that. And I will do. I've not forgotten. So yeah, it's a lovely day at the moment. It's not going to stay like this. There's some rain heading in later on. But we're in the mountains and that's all that matters. A bit of rare free time. And it's all about making the most of that. I've had a cracking summer with Tom and Emily. We've been doing loads of stuff. And life at the moment is completely opposite for me as to what it was a few years ago when I was not seeing my children at all. So I can't complain. We're having some cracking times. But it's still nice to get a solo escape every now and again. We're heading up toward the summit of Codel Moor or Stony Cove Pike. You know, pronunciations aren't the best. Um, but yeah, the wind is a bit of a constant 15 to 20, gusting up to 25 at the moment. And it's great. Sun, clouds, bit of blue sky. Let's make the most of it. Well, I'll tell you what's going through my head now just the orientation of the tent. Now this Namach has only got one door on the vestibule and it only faces in one direction, obviously. Uh, and the winds are forecast southwesterly, um, progressing more westerly uh, into tomorrow as this storm system passes through. So I'm looking south, southwest and west. And I'm gonna go with southwesterly, uh, sort of this angle, even though it's slightly offset at the moment, I know tomorrow the majority of the wind direction will be aligned with the tent. I'm going to be facing the tent this way, so vestibule away from the wind. Now I know you're meant to pitch the Namach vestibule into the wind. I don't want to do that because if I do that, that's my view. If I pitch the other way around, these are my views to these lovely fells here. So that's my kind of thought process. Always think about that, especially when you've got a tunnel tent. It's going to be orientated this way, southwest. Well, we're obviously all pitched up. I've got some nice prayer flags, which Tom got me when we were in Keswick on the Nepalese market. Nice views over to the west on these lovely half moon windows and vents at each end of the tent. Excellent airflow. Really nice and breezy. Great for getting rid of humid air, moist air. Great for condensation management. Really roomy vestibule. The footprint covers all the way uh, to the far end of the tent. It's very, very livable. The wind's picking up around 20, 25 again. Gusting slightly higher now. I'll show you that when we get out. Looking across to a lovely ridge here in the Lake District National Park and uh, yeah I'm just about to get tent set up. I'm using the Fjallraven Abisko Freeluft 45. It's got a nice generous pocket on the front. Uh, you can fit plenty in there. What I do like about this one is you can zip the whole of the pack open. So for example now where I want to get organised instead of rifling top to bottom I can literally just open the whole pack uh, so it comes in really handy and conversely when you're packing away if you want to do it that way um, you can do so it's nice um, and handy just to have that little feature a few new bits of kit on this one some nice lighting to talk you through some nice cookware um, I always like to show my gear um, because what else is there to talk about other than the fantastic scenery and the, the lovely equipment which you know we all enjoy so we'll get set up and I'll bring you back. That is it. it. Just folds out 
no time that's nice nice and stable it's good for chopping on as well so it's nice and flat and the seam in the middle there there's no ridge it's just completely flat so happy to bring that along for a stable base and look at that lovely sunny skies my hat drying nicely in the wind that lovely sound of the wind rippling the fly sheet blowing across and again these vents are absolutely fantastic in this tent absolutely perfect nothing to do apart from enjoy this and soon we'll be cracking open a nice beer we'll have a little look around the tent now this doesn't really need any introductions in terms of its storm worthiness it's uh, it's designed for inhospitable places and very extreme weather conditions 50 mile an hour winds in my view it's significant when you're in a piece of fabric with some aluminium poles um, but it's part of the black label series so it's 10.25 mil poles there's the Kerlon 1800 fabric which has an 18 kilo tear strength and with tunnel tents the key to pitching them at the strongest is to make sure that you've got longitudinal tension you want the tent to be as taut as possible end to end when they sag they are not performing at their best now you can see the wind you know, it's just passing directly over there's not much movement there i've got my wind meter i'm thinking this is around 15 20 at the moment so that's nothing for this tent but if you look at the shape there's not much movement so just over 20 miles an hour which you know when people say they camp and i've said it before in 70 mile an hour winds that is that's extreme uh, you know 30 mile an hour winds in a tent is significant you know that is strong wind 20 mile an hour i mean it is uh, it's not exactly favorable conditions and so it's going to be more than double this later but the tunnel design if you pitch it correctly nice and taut it's surprisingly stable we'll keep an eye on the wind speeds as they hopefully increase a bit later on and we'll test out the equipment that's what we're here for to enjoy the elements in a safe environment a safe manner know where i am there's no dodgy ground and we'll just see what the conditions do so the best views are over to the west that's a lovely ridge very very picturesque and what better place to enjoy a bit of escapism in a good shelter with a nice few beers and a bit of sunshine so like i say later on this evening uh, around eight o'clock it's all set to change showers rain uh, and then much stronger winds Pick this based on the can. Look at that. It's an absolute work of art. Polly's Florette Extra Pale Ale. This is what we're going to be having for our first aperitif. We'll use that to steady it. There's a bit of weather heading in from the southwest. You just see some cloud descending over the Hell Vellum range. Uh, the tops of that were, were, were free, but now the cloud base is lowering. Just about to see it through the vent there. Anyway, there is a lovely floral aroma in the tent. Lovely and pale, session ale. It's really hoppy, it's very floral. Yeah, it's going well so far. Winds are steadily picking up. I'm planning a camp on the range opposite me. Um, I won't name them, it's obvious where I am. But yeah, uh, there's a nice ridge there. 
um, one of the highest, uh, most prominent peaks. I am going to be um, taking a different type of tent and heading up there. I've got loads planned. It's always tough in the summer holidays. I'll speak about that a little bit later on. Um, I've got one child full time now, so it's um, yeah. There's pretty much no free time, but I'm not complaining. I just can't do this as often. So if anyone wonders, well, why have you stopped making all the videos? Well, that's why. Um, so yeah, I'll be taking Tom with me uh, on some more camps. But when it gets to like, you know, late autumn, winter, uh, it's not for him at that. You know, that time of year, he doesn't. He's not as weird as me. He doesn't love sleeping in the snow. But you know, he might might like that one day. So yeah, we're gonna finish this beer. Uh, if anything interesting happens weather-wise, I'll bring you back out. I'll have another look around the tent, especially as the sun's setting. And then we'll get on our evening meal, which is a, yeah, you guessed it, a pasta bolognese. A man who sticks to what he knows and doesn't deviate from that, really. I need to start trying new things, getting out of the comfort zone. But yeah, I've got some new MSR cookware, the new Titan kettle. Uh, I've got a Pocket Rocket 2 stove, uh, a nice MSR sort of mug. I uh, just have some drinks out of in the morning. Uh, the weather tomorrow morning looks horrendous. 55 mile an hour gusts um, around 10. So if I can help it, I'm going to be up. I forgot my earplugs as well, so I'm not going to get much sleep. Um, but it's really going to deteriorate overnight. So I'm going to be up, packed away and off, uh, off the fell. So that should be fun. So look forward to that towards the latter half of this video. Well, there's a bit of weather heading in from the west. As we look north, we've still got a few blue skies and certainly so still out to the east. That's where it's coming from. About 11 o'clock, the forecast is set to deteriorate markedly in terms of the wind. So that should be fun. I always enjoy it. Um, I don't specifically see, well, I do actually, you know, if I'm ever off and the conditions are um, going to be exciting, I'll go out and try and experience it. Not recklessly, um, you know, it's always, it's always thought out in terms of location, terrain, um, and there's always a plan B and options and, you know, I'm not, I'm not even saying this as a disclaimer. Uh, people who watch this channel have made videos for years. I've been coming outdoors while camping for almost 30 years now. So, yeah. Um, but I do appreciate people can watch the videos and think, well, I'll go and do that um, and get yourselves in some difficulty. I think the majority of people that watch mine um, probably of a similar ilk um, kind of know what they're doing. But we all make some foolish mistakes. I've made mistakes in the past put tents in situations they're not designed for and it always turns out to be an expensive mistake but yeah it's nice and quiet now all the hikers are down i'm thinking about having an evening meal the pasta bolognese um yeah i was up here with my kids in the quiet site a few weeks ago quite poignant thinking of that i still miss them uh, my little daughter has gone off uh, on a holiday with her mum and i'll see her in just over a week Hopefully she's having a lovely time. She's on the plane now, so, and uh, my lad is having a night at mum and dad's and I've escaped outdoors to, to come and do a camp. But yeah, the silhouettes of the Hel Helvellyn range, don't know if you can make them out there. Um, but yeah, there's a definite drop in temperature ahead of this front, which is gonna pass over us. There's some showers actually over there. But it's fascinating to watch the weather roll in and learn to, um, you know, feel the changing conditions, what to look out for, um, and know when things are approaching. Obviously, you can look at the weather forecast, but I always think it's interesting to try and spot some of the signs yourself. Tent, yeah, it's fine. It's not been tested so far. Like I say, if you look at the two poles, they're not moving, and I've got it tensioned out as much as I can, basically pulling end to end, so that's nicely taut there. You can always see with these bit of a lines that run um, along the length of the tent when it's nice and taut. Keep going periodically, tightening the guys and these Delta ground anchors. I know they follow my Instagram page, but they're great. They really hold fast. The bulky, that's the only downside, but when you need to ensure and know that your 
anchors for your guy lines cannot fail because that's the leading cause of pole failure and um, they are literally the best in my opinion uh, that you can get so they always fit if you fold them or stack them in a certain way in the top of your rucksack as well so it's no problem it's just on this tussocky grass it's quite difficult to achieve a nice flat pitch along the base of the fly sheet there's nothing you can do about that uh, the, the, the humps in the grass lift the fly up and it gives the appearance that it's kind of distorted but that's how it is it's not in a tent showroom this is real life and this is how your tent looks but it's not a bad pitch nice and roomy some ethereal rays coming out the base of the cloud there red screes looking majestic as always and Windermere snaking away down to the south looking across over to High Street where of course again a good few months ago now seems like an age ago I was out with the lads having a fantastic hike and we ended up around Angleton uh, which is a bit further north from my current location bit of a wind chill there when I got the one layer on um, kindly sent to me by my friends over at Nordic Outdoor very grateful um, I'll leave a link to that again it's not affiliate they were just kind enough to send it with a tent I purchased from them um, so very kind and it's like a, a warm uh, summer base layer very good at wicking um, and keeping that moisture off and away from your, your body so it can evaporate so that's it I think we'll get out the wind get a nice warming meal down us and um, yeah a couple of hours we'll be in some tasty weather conditions so that's much more than we need well a little bit more than we need but it'll be fine lid on and then this igniter uh, just flows up the tube there the glass and yeah we've all seen piezo igniters before but this works well usually every time first time apart from when you say that let's get this fired up The main thing with these meals is making sure that your hot water gets into all the folds of the bag. There's nothing worse than tucking into it and finding a powdery section. That horror has happened to me many times and experience says a little bit more time invested in this stage results in a far nicer culinary experience with these boil in the bag meals and then I always mention it but it's always for the benefit of anyone that might be watching one of these videos for the for the first time uh, an insulator pouch from Valley and Peak um, once you've given this a good stir and put the right amount of water in and then put the whole pouch in an insulator pouch while it's rehydrating and you preserve the warmth keeps it insulated from the cold air and it's noticeably hotter warmer when you come to finally eat it and it does actually work especially you know it's it's less important on these types of camps but when you go in in the dead of winter and it's and I've been up in here it's like minus seven minus eight you will definitely notice a difference in the temperature of your meal so that's it right into the corners I always give it a bit of a squeeze through the bag just to, to clean the, the spoon and uh, just take care, seal it up, make sure it snaps closed and then this insulator pouch goes in there. You can put it in a plastic bag if you're a bit fussy about it um, but it'll be fine. And then I think this one's uh, eight minutes, yeah, eight minutes. So. I always fold it over again just for double security and that's it 
bit of a drawstring closure on this one. And again in the winter, just use it to warm your hands, put it between your legs, keep yourself warm, guys and girls. Um, it comes in handy in the winter, or put it inside your jacket. There's not much room in mine at the moment with a bit of weight loss needed. But yeah, eight minutes, so yeah, I'll bring you back when it's time to tuck in. But it's time for one of the most interesting shots in the whole video. Trying some pasta bolognese for the three millionth time out of a plastic packet. We need a beer to go with it, and number two, we'll go with the transient double hopped IPA. Sometimes, um, if you put your beer in your, your sort of mug, it is actually picking up now, um, just gives it a bit of a wider base, it's a little bit more stable. So yeah, let's get into this. Bait of breath. It's be one of the most replayed moments of the whole video. Eating some pasta. I do need to um, branch out and try um, cooking some actual food. Uh, going solo. I've mentioned them before. Fantastic videos. Really captures the atmosphere of the, the camps. And his cooking is uh, second to none. He's got a lot more patience than me. I just like to pour some water into a bag. This for me is one of the easiest and most flavorful camping meals that I have. So really nice, don't want to spill it all over the tent. Genuinely that is so tasty. If you've not had it, try out the Termat Pasta Bolognese and the Transient Double Hopped IPA. Good combination. As always, cheers to the uh, long lost great outdoors for me. Good to be back. I'll enjoy this in peace. And um, we'll go and have a look around camp when this is down us. and atmospheric if you look to that area of light I'm not sure how well you can pick it up on this camera but the silhouettes of distant fells just making the way into the cloud bases bags of atmosphere with these ragged bits of cloud just scudding over the distant fell tops it is so good, and look at that, ethereal light, absolutely bags of atmosphere up here, and this is what I love about it, you come out when it's like this, you just experience the, the real rugged atmosphere of the great outdoors, and again when you're on your own, I know I'm talking now to the camera but I've been out for about 20 minutes just just me and my thoughts, taking it all in, and that's why it's such a mindful, relaxing activity. Great if you're stressed, you just want a kind of mental break. It's been horrendous in work over the past month or so. Um, absolutely mental times, really, really upsetting times. So yeah, it's good to escape into the solitude of the outdoors just to hit that reset button look at that cloud 
absolutely spectacular. This is what it's all about, these views, the feeling it gives you, the sense of solitude and peacefulness. Well, we've just got a bit of Malbec, a bit of cheese, and we're listening to some Deborah Hatswell podcasts. That wind is definitely picking up now. I'll keep my eyes out for violet ground beetles because that's what that was. Look at that weather. Yeah, some wind, definitely heading in. That's uh, got a lovely campfire mode where it kind of emulates flames of a campfire, just adds to the atmosphere. That's how I like it. Anyway, I will. Um, I'll bring you back before I say good night. But I'm just sitting here enjoying that bit of red wine. We we'll see what the weather turns out like. Um, we'll be up early anyway. I don't think I'll get much sleep because I forgot my um, earplugs, so that was an epic fail, but a couple of cans of Malbec would be all right. But yeah, if anything exciting happens, I'll bring you back, but I'll definitely say goodnight, and we'll see how the, the weather keeps going. just come to the boil just having it black as it comes this is definite wake up isn't it so yeah nothing quite beats it will be up and off soon but this little phase where yeah let's put it on there and see how that table deals with heat nothing quite beats just looking out from your, your cosy shelter nice and warm Nice breakfast. I need to re I need to up my game though, and I cooking wise, food wise. I was speaking to a mate last night as well, and she said, "Yeah, you need to um, sort it out. I need to get a little bit more adventurous with my cooking. I'm going to get one of those um, jet boil summit skillets and start doing some different bits and bobs, and maybe even take things for breakfast as well." Well, it's always the way when we're packing up the conditions become challenging um, I wish it was like this throughout the camp but just to demonstrate obviously that's empty now look how robust the tent is it's taking that almost from the side slight shift in the winds and there's very little deformation on the pole arches as you can see they are very very strong those 10.2 mil poles and the whole tent for a tunnel tent 
and this is strong winds trust me on that it's absolutely blowing a hooli it's a very very robust shelter well, that's the worst bit over the whole structure of the tent is now flat gently taking care because that's where you can tear your pole arch don't rush it there's no danger now it's fire the tent's not going anywhere take your time feed the pole through and leave the tent on the floor it's not going anywhere and it's anchored to the pack and then methodically get it rolled up and then we'll head off just taking our time there's one out So that's it, the all important, no trace other than some flattened grass. Having a great time, it's uh, ended a very stormy camp, a very different camp to how it began. Hope you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up if you have, leave me a comment, I'll get back to every constructive one. I don't know when I'm next going to be back out, hopefully there's not going to be so much of a gap. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for watching, get back to the car, get editing. I'll see you on the next adventure. Take care.